Good evening, good evening. Blitzball Champ is back. A brand new video here on the U to the Tube. So, just finished watching NXT TakeOver In Your House 2021. Wow. This event was wild. Very wild, and in a good way. Let's talk about the matches. So, there were only five matches on this card. So, didn't seem like a lot, but they were still very good. So, let's jump right on into it. Starting off, they went with the winner-takes-all six-man tag team match. The North American Championship and the tag titles were all on the line at the same time. So the champions, Brunson Reed and MSK, defended the titles against all three members of Legado del Fantasma. Now, I have to say, overall, it was really good to see all six of these guys really go at it. But Brunson Reed and MSK had definitely... The, the chemistry was top-notch. Santos Escobar kind of was being a coward at first to not want to face Bronson Reed. But I tell you, Bronson Reed, this dude, I really feel like can grow into, a, into another star. Could, can grow like a, a Keith Lee or like an Adam Cole or a Johnny Gargano. I think Bronson Reed could definitely be another one of those guys. I really do. He's got the charisma. You know, he's definitely showing that he can hang and be dominant. Keep an eye out for Bronson Reed. I think he could definitely grow into a future big name. You know, maybe not so much on the main roster, but definitely on NXT or maybe on the main roster. You never know. But definitely, this match was a great opening match. Got to see a lot of double teams from both teams. And of course, <laughs> the ending was quite excellent. As Santos Escobar went to grab the North American Championship. Bam! Gets squashed by Brunson Reed, and Brunson Reed takes another plexiglass pillar down. So, that eventually was pretty much the turning point that then led to the double team, well, actually, triple team. You had MSK do their double team finisher, that little heart attack uh, um, blockbuster combo. And then Bronson Reed, with the finish, with a tsunami, shook the whole ring pretty much. And gets the one, two, three. And Bronson Reed and MSK retain their respective titles. The NXT North American Championship and the NXT Tag Team titles as well. Now, there were definitely a lot of close calls as well. I mean, Santos Escobar hit Bronson Reed with the, the Phantom Driver, and even uh, Raul Mendoza and Walking Wild even hit their uh, double-team finisher, that uh, running Enziguri Russian leg sweep combo. Uh, you got to see each wrestler, well, each one except Santos Escobar, uh, do like a suicide springboard move into the outside. And Big Brunson Reed with the, the big suicide dive just taking everybody out. That was that was amazing. But got to see a lot of, of high flying in this match, even from both sides, from both teams. So this was an incredible uh, opening match. I was kind of surprised. I did not think that they would go at this match to start the show. But hey, I'm all for it. 
I'm all for it. But MSK and Bronson Reed retain their titles. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Legado del Fantasma going forward. I, I don't think the rivalry is over, but, I mean, MSK and Bronson Reed have kind of held on to the momentum, you know, because remember, MSK defended those tag titles against uh, Walking Wild and Raul Mendoza and, you know, defeated them and then turn around and all three members of Legado del Fantasma lose this match. So, I mean, they, they've really lost momentum from these two back-to-back -back matches. So, we'll have to see what happens going forward if they're going to continue this rivalry and whatnot. But, but then again, you got to also keep an eye on Grizzled Young Veterans and Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher, because you know they still have a score to settle, and pretty much who escapes out of that, the victor, will most likely be the next in line to challenge MSK for the tag titles. So something to keep in mind on that. Okay, next up, we have the singles match. The ladies in action, Mercedes Martinez, Versus Zia Lee. Um, I definitely was digging uh, Zia Lee's uh, kind of sort of blue Princess Katana look. Uh, definitely had the, the colored uh, hair as well. Thought it was really cool. But um, this was this is pretty much Zia Lee's uh, first takeover match. If I, if I remember correctly, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is Zia Lee's first NXT TakeOver match. So this was big. This was really big. And it's been a while since she's had a match anyway. You know, she had been kind of dealing with... Uh, the last thing that she dealt with was um, Caden Carter and Casey Catanzaro. So we hadn't really seen much of her like since after then. And then, you know, this rivalry started up. But of course, this all goes back to... Four years ago, when Zia Lee lost in the first round of the Mae Young Classic to Mercedes Martinez. So, fast forward to now, they have their match. And I have to say, this was, this was a pretty good match. Probably not the best on the card, but still a pretty, a pretty good match. Um, Boa got involved. And it really just was back and forth between these two ladies. But sure enough, Xia Li was able to hit her signature for her finisher, that, you know, spinning wushu-like kick, and got the pin, got the 1-2-3 victory over Mercedes Martinez. So Xia Li gets her first takeover victory. This is big. Because also, she is also undefeated ever since her gimmick change. So, she's still riding that momentum. Now, of course, after the match, Mercedes Martinez uh, took out Boa and Zia Lee with a chair, which Zia Lee introduced first because, you know, she wasn't done with Mercedes. She wanted to punish her. But Mercedes did get the, the last laugh on those two and took out Boa and Xia Li with a chair. But when it came down to facing, uh, was it Mai Ling or Mei Ling? Mei Lin, I think that was her name. Had a stare down. Mai Ling got up. They started to inch more towards each other. Mai Ling locked in Locked in, I want to say that's like a Tonga death grip, kind of sort of what, what Ming used to use, or also known as Haku. Looked like a Tonga death grip that she was doing. And Mercedes was able to fight it off for a second and get in a chair shot, but it really wasn't enough to phase her. And she was able to lock in another Tonga death grip and then pretty much toss her off the ramp into the plexiglass. 
And Tian Sha pretty much stands tall as Mercedes Martinez is now down on the ground off of the rampway. So something tells me that this definitely isn't over between Zion Lee and Mercedes Martinez. I don't, I don't think it's over. I definitely don't think it's over. But this is a huge victory for Zia Lee. Her first ever takeover, NXT takeover victory. This is big. This is big. And some might wonder if she's eventually going to continue to get wins and then get an NXT women's title shot. I mean, but me personally, if it gets to that point, I do think Raquel Gonzalez would probably give her her first loss. But, I mean, you never know. You never know. So, we have to see what happens. Me personally, I would love to see Zia Lee and Saray feud. I think that would be a good starting feud for Saray. Her and Zia Lee, you know, both about the same size, same build. You know, I think that would be a great feud. That feud could last for a while. I would love to see that. But that's just my personal opinion. But Zia Lee gets the victory over Mercedes Martinez. Pretty good match. Not the best on the card, but still a pretty, pretty good match. Next up, we had the Million Dollar Championship ladder match. Cameron Grimes versus L.A. Knight. Now, of course, Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase came out uh, with his security crew with the glass briefcase with the Million Dollar Championship inside. He was able to put it and suspend it up to the top for the ladder match. Now, I couldn't help but notice that L.A. Knight came out in gear Yellow and red gear that was that kind of reminded me of Bojangles in a way. <laughs> One might say Hulk Hogan, but I totally I don't know why I was thinking Bojangles, seeing the the red lettering and the the yellow ring gear, but that instantly came to mind. So, <laughs> pardon me, but so you had this match, this ladder match. Um, it was a great match. It was definitely a great match. Of course, you know. I was going for Cameron Grimes. Like I said, he's a fellow North Carolinian, just like myself. And you know what? There were some good ladder spots. Uh, I don't think there was enough of the big ladder used. Not until like maybe the last half of the match. But it was really good to see Cameron Grimes just fly all over the place. I mean, he even did a really cool dive from off of one of the those steel, I think steel or metal pillars. And so that was pretty cool. And you know, threw LA Knight into a to the um top base of the ladder. But there was a lot of good spots. Uh did a backdrop on Cameron Grimes onto like the side of the ladder. I was like, "Ugh, that'll That'll tear your back up. But Cameron Grimes went to uh, get the gold ladder. So there was a gold ladder over by the um, entrance ramp. You know, it had dollar signs on it. And I think it had some diamonds on the little ladder legs or something like that. But yeah, brought, Cameron Grimes brought in the gold ladder. And it was back and forth, both jockeying for position. And it looked like Cameron Grimes was getting ready to win. I mean, he even touched it. But L.A. Knight was able to push the ladder, can't send Cameron Grimes flying to the outside and through uh, another ladder. And L.A. Knight was able to quickly climb up and grab the briefcase. And L.A. Knight is your new million. Dollar champion. And of course, afterwards, 
Ted DiBiase opened up the case, you know, got the um, glass case from him, opened it up and presented him with the million dollar championship. And there you have it. LA Knight. This is pretty much this is pretty much his first big win. I mean, he hasn't been on NXT that long, but it's kind of a bummer because Cameron Grimes has been on NXT for a while now and he has yet to really get that that big win. He has yet to really get that. So, I was hoping for Cameron Grimes, but at the same time, because LA Knight's the the newer star on NXT, I can I can understand why he got the victory and you know with him being a heel it makes sense i just i really hope to see cameron grimes get that big win like i would love to see him as maybe a future uh nxt cruiserweight champion i think that would be great i mean he's already a former x division champion back on in impact wrestling so it wouldn't surprise me if he had an opportunity to uh dethrone kushida or at some point just, you know, whoever is the champion, he dethrones and becomes NXT Cruiserweight champion. I would love to see Cameron Grimes with that title. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm sure that this, this rivalry isn't over. But as much as I was going for Cameron Grimes, I, I do feel like deep down this was the right call, putting the belt on LA Knight. I, th I think this was the right call. But good ladder match. Definitely a good ladder match. All right, next up, we had the NXT Women's Championship match. Raquel Gonzalez defended against Ember Moon. Now, the match was good overall. Here's the issue that I have with this match. When Raquel Gonzalez dethroned Io Shirai to win the title, Dakota Kai really didn't interfere, like, hardly to at all in that match. But in this match with Ember Moon, Dakota Kai interfered a lot. Like, a whole lot. And if you ask me, it's kind of a bummer, and it kind of looks a little bit weak towards Raquel Gonzalez because, I mean, Raquel Gonzalez really, with the way that she is, you know, being, you know, one of the big ladies on NXT, it just looks kind of bad, her having, getting a lot of interference in a match from Dakota Kai, because she, she didn't, she didn't have any of that. When she beat Io Shirai. You know, that's that's the thing. She didn't have that when she dethroned Io Shirai. So I just that was the main issue that I had with this match. There was just way, way too much interference from Dakota Kai. Way too much. Now, of course it was back and forth. Um and like I said, even Ember Moon hit a couple of her signatures, even hit an eclipse. But, of course, Dakota Kai put Raquel's foot on the rope. Now, eventually Shotzi Blackheart did come out and pretty much fight off Dakota Kai all the way to the back. But Ember took a, made a second attempt at an eclipse. Raquel caught her. And then eventually was able to hit her with the, um, I think it's called the Chikonga Bomb. I don't know if I said that right. But the one arm power bomb, and was able to put away Ember Moon. Raquel Gonzalez, still your NXT Women's Champion. Which, like I said, I didn't expect Ember Moon to win anyway. But for what Raquel Gonzalez has been able to do up to now, and such, and what she's done to dethrone Io Shirai, I feel like it kind of looked bad with as much interference as Dakota Kai did in this match. 
I think I think it looked pretty bad. I understand that it led to Shotzi coming out and kind of evening things out. I mean, even though it was near the end of the match, it just it was too much. It was way too much interference. Way too much. So that was that was my only issue with that. I mean, the match itself was was still good. You know, these two ladies did great, but too much interference. And Raquel Gonzalez really does not need all that. You know, she's been able to do well, even in the ring and such, without Dakota Kai, as proven when she won the title off of Io Shirai. You know, even though Dakota was out there. So, that's just, that's just my take on that. In all honesty, that's just that's just my take on that. But I'm happy that Shotzi Blackheart is back. Now, before I get into the main event, so you know there were a couple of things that uh, that happened throughout the night. Of course, um, you had a lot of brawls backstage with some of the competitors from the main event you also even had a brawl with the four ladies Raquel Dakota Ember and Shotzi in the back and just throughout the night William Regal had to get involved and separate folks and such it was just it was chaos um they also announced uh the Great American Bash NXT Great American Bash in July I think it's uh July 6th they said so we got that to look forward to, which it'll be on a Tuesday. It won't be on a, it's not a pay-per-view, but it'll be on a Tuesday. So we got that to look forward to. Um, of course, you got to see Hit Row do some, some merchandise advertising. They got, they got their new shirts out. So that's, that's pretty cool. You had, um, you had, what's his face? Uh, what, Todd Pet Pettingill? I think that was his name? Going up against Dexter Loomis and uh, I think it was uh, Karate Fighters or Karate Warriors, that little that little game with the action figure where you twist and turn and the action figure does punches and kicks and everything. And <laughs> Dexter Loomis was getting irritated and he ended up just taking uh, the opponent's figure off and, and the dude was like, you win, you win, you win. So, um, thought that was a pretty funny segment. But anyway, on to the main event. The Fatal Five Way for the NXT Championship. Karrion Cross, the champion, defended against Johnny Gargano, Pete Dunn, Kyle O'Reilly, and Adam Cole, baby! This match was crazy, and I loved every minute of it. There were super kicks and enziguris and double teams here and double teams there and double team submissions here and double team submissions there and rebound clotheslines and, like, just signatures here, finishers there, uh, fingers breaking, like... This match was chaotic. They even put Karrion Cross through the through the in your house door at the at the um, entrance ramp. Um, Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole uh, did the double power bomb on Karrion Cross onto the announce table. Johnny Gargano had a double Gargano escape going. Like <laughs> this match was wild, and I loved it. Now, the match really started strong for Karrion Cross. I mean, he was just laying out each individual, each of the other opponents, just one by one by one. And it really took a team effort from the others to really lay into Karrion Cross, you know, with him being the biggest one out of everybody else. But, I mean, it was crazy. Folks were knocking each other down, counter hit after counter hit. It was crazy. Signature after signature. It was wild. Really, really wild. But you got to think. Look at all of the individuals in this match. 
Karrion Cross, current NXT champion, two-time NXT champion. Johnny Gargano, the first ever Triple Crown champion in NXT. And a three-time North American champion. Adam Cole, longest reigning NXT champ and also a Triple Crown champ. Pete Dunne was a NXT UK champion, the second one, and also a former NXT tag team champion. Remember, he was champion with uh, Matt Riddle. Kyle O'Reilly, you know, at least, what, two-time NXT tag team champion? So, I mean, and also, of course, uh, Dusty Cup, Dusty Classic winner, best tag team, Winner twice, I believe. So, this match was loaded with all-stars. Loaded. When you think about it. So, you best believe this match was going to deliver. And was why it was the main event. And just, oh man, this match was wild. This is definitely a, a, a match of the year candidate. Just out of any promotion. Definitely a match of the year candidate. And when it was all said and done, it looked like Kyle O'Reilly was going to get the finish. Had the heel hook on Adam Cole. But then Karrion Cross came in with the finish. Locked in the cross jacket on Kyle O'Reilly. And he eventually passed out. And Karrion Cross. Picked up the scraps and was able to get the submission victory and retain the NXT championship. So despite Karrion Cross being taken out at least a good two, three times in this match, he was able to survive, lock in the cross jacket on Kyle O'Reilly. It was kind of a bummer that he had to take, take the submission loss out of everybody. But maybe this will eventually set up a one-on-one -on -one encounter in the future with Karrion Cross and Kyle O'Reilly. But big victory for Karrion Cross, dethroning four other All Stars in NXT. And to be honest, it's going to be interesting to see. Who's going to be next in line to challenge Karrion Cross for the NXT title? I mean, or who they might build up, build up to be the one to dethrone Karrion Cross. But it looks like it's not going to be anytime soon. I mean, he, he took out these other four, and then you know, defeated Finn Balor twice back to back. So I mean. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. But Karrion Cross is unstoppable right now. The dude is unstoppable. And he's been he's been doing this on his own, you know, no interference from Scarlet in this match. I mean, he survived and got the victory. And he didn't have champion's advantage either. Because pretty much everybody hit their their signatures and uh, finishers in this match. So, <laughs> it was wild. It was very wild. And then the very last segment before the show ended for good, William Regal was leaving... And pretty much hinted at there needing to be a change. Everything was chaotic. I mean, after all, he was seen multiple times throughout the show trying to break up fights backstage. Which, I mean, he had been kind of doing that all the previous few episodes of NXT. 
But with that last segment, it's looking like, you know, Mr. Regal had mentioned he had been in charge of NXT, the GM, for, for seven years. And said he thinks it's time for a change. And after hearing that, looks like William Regal might be stepping down as NXT GM. That's what it sounds like, y'all. I'm sure we're going to hear more about what the deal is this coming Tuesday, but that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Um, and William Regal, he's done a great job with NXT. So it looks like within a week or two or however long, it looks like we're probably going to be seeing a new GM for NXT. And things could get really interesting. Another thing that I also heard is potentially they may be trying to bring Samoa Joe back and bring him back to NXT. Now, this might sound crazy, but what if he came back to WWE and became the new GM of NXT? What would y'all think of that? I know it sounds crazy, but Think, think about how good or bad that could be. And, and more than that, how much of a possibility it could be. Because like I said, with the way that In Your House ended, it looks like William Regal's about to step down as NXT GM. But we'll see. I'm, I'm sure we're probably going to hear something this Tuesday. I'm, I'm sure we're probably going to hear something this Tuesday. But that is NXT TakeOver In Your House 2021. I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. The matches were, were great. The main event was wild. I enjoyed it. Let me know what y'all think. Do y'all agree with the outcomes? Like I said, there was a, a new champion crown, the Million Dollar Champion, LA Knight, and then all the rest of the titles were retained. So what did y'all think of the outcomes? Did y'all like the matches? Did y'all agree with the outcomes? Uh, what do y'all think about possibly William Regal stepping down as NXT GM? Who would you like to see as his replacement? You know, think about that. Um, that's it. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Click the notification bell so you can catch every video that I release and upload. Thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram signing off. Hope everybody has a blessed week, and I will see y'all very, very soon. Happy wrestling. Peace.